Okay, this is going to be your activity to show what you know with multiplication and division so far. Now, same as all the other assessments, it, this is just an activity to show what you know, okay? If there's a part on this that really doesn't make sense to you, or you just think, gosh, I, I don't know, I haven't done anything like this before, I haven't covered this, that's totally fine, and that's actually really great information. So you are just going to note that down. That being said, you are always going to attempt your best, okay? So you don't need to guess, but uh, you, you do need to just try and, and make an attempt so that uh, we can see what it is that you know and where we need to spend some more time hanging out and build your understanding. So this is a, uh, it says collaborative task, which means that you usually would do it um, with a partner or another student. If you have someone that you can do this with, um, who's not just going to give you the answers, like you're not to do this with your parent, but if you have a friend who is similar in age or similar, um, most importantly, in what they have covered so far in math, you don't want somebody who um, is way ahead of you in what they've studied in math. You want someone who has studied about the same amount of math as you have to do a, a paired activity, okay? Um, or this one you really can do on your own, okay? And it gives the scenario where a class photo is being taken and the photographer is just looking for different ways to separate the kids and, and make the arrangements. So it's asking about dividing the class equally into three rows. What if some of the students were, be, were away? So some of the students, well, I guess you get to choose how many students might be away, three, five, you choose. You just would have to say, I'm thinking that two students are away, or I'm thinking that five students are away. So first you want to talk about how many students are in your class, okay? Because it doesn't actually tell you how many students are in the class because it's talking about your class. So I want you to think of your class. If you are someone who learns at home, how about you just imagine that you have a class of Oh, I don't know, 15 or 20, or you pick a number somewhere between 15 and 30 to imagine your class number, and then just work with that number. So you're going to want to say how many kids are in your class, and then you are going to want to draw and explain different ways of arranging those kids. You do not need to go into vast detail with your drawing. <laughs> you can do stick people, you could do circles, you could do dots, you could do squares. It doesn't need to be some work of art. Something just quick to represent what you're showing, okay? And then uh, show different ways. So don't just do one way. Try and see if you can think of more than one way to show how the photographer could arrange the kids. Uh... Now, this extension is going to be optional, but I would like you to try, what if two more students were added to your class? So if you picked the number 17, what if two more students joined the class that day? What if all the students were here today, so no children were away, and you're working with that number of 17, if that was the number you chose? What if you combined the class from next door? Uh-oh. Now you're going to have to choose a new number. If you don't have a class to think of next door, you would have to think of, well, okay, maybe the class next door has more kids, so I'll choose 21. Or maybe the class next door has less kids, so I'll choose 15. Okay, and then you would figure out if you had that class and your class, how could you combine them? You'll notice there's not a lot of room here, so... I think what would be best is to get another piece of paper for probably the first uh, question as well as this next question because you're going to need some space to do your doodles and explain and all that kind of stuff. But definitely for the extension, you would need another piece of paper. Okay, then you get into some other things here. Um, 
it asks you to solve three times six two different ways. Okay, now if you're really good at this and you just go, oh, three times six is, and the answer just comes to you. Uh, that's great. This part is maybe going to be harder for you. I do not want to see you say, well, I just knew. I've memorized it. You can say that. You also are going to need to say why you know. Okay? If you don't know why you know, then that's an important thing to put down. Okay? Because as this becomes, as your math becomes more complicated over the years, it's going to be important that you understand why three times six equals what it does. Okay? Try and see if you can represent three times six two different ways. That's all it's asking for here. I solved the question. Represent it one way, represent it another way. Okay? Uh, this one is about skateboards and scooters at a skate park. You're going to need to ask yourself, how many wheels do skateboards have? How many wheels do scooters have? Do not just go by what is shown in the picture. Think about it in your brain. That's a little hint for you, okay? Uh, and then you're going to need to write out your number sentences. A number sentence is just uh, three plus five plus two, or five minus one plus eight. That's a number sentence, okay? It's just a way of making a statement, excuse me, a statement with numbers and then saying, what the end result is. That's a number sentence, okay? Same thing with 18 divided by three, okay? Same idea as above. You're gonna show one way of representing 18 divided by three and another way. Now again, same as in all the other ones, you have room for reflection. So you can say, uh, this was super easy for me or I've just memorized these. I don't know why I know that 18 divided by three equals I'm not going to give you the answer. Okay, so this again is your space to just help us get a window inside your brain. And then your other question here is um, tickets for a fair. And you are going to take a look at these questions. How many friends might there have been? So again, you get to choose uh, the numbers here. So maybe there's five friends, there's three friends, there's 10 friends. How many might it be, okay? How many tickets did each friend receive based on how many friends there are, right? Draw a picture to show your answer and show other possibilities. So don't forget this, show other possibilities. Don't just do 10. Don't just make it easy for yourself, okay? You can do an easy one and then do more of a challenging one to really show your thinking, all right? And uh, draw a picture. Again, it can be stick people. It can be circles. It doesn't need to be a work of art, okay? The last thing is about a fundraising event. Don't get freaked out by this performance task here. Just ignore that. This is just bringing together different skills that you have um, done with multiplication and division and just bringing it together into one scenario. That's all that means, okay? So it's asking you some different things. You're gonna have to do some multiplication, some division. You're gonna have to think about it. If you need to, talk yourself through it out loud. Use a scrap piece of paper. If you use a scrap piece of paper, be sure and give that uh, with the rest of these answers so that we can see your thinking. Okay, so it says, did they reach their fundraising goal? Show your thinking below. If this isn't enough space for you, which it might not be, and that's okay, use a spare piece of paper and submit that along with the rest of this. Okay, and that is your multiplication and division task.